Hey there, Nick Gentakis here. In this video, we're going to go over a couple of different use cases of using Brace expansion with Bash. So if you're using Bash, C shell, or any Bash-like compatible shell, you'll get to go. If your script needs to target POSIX compliant shell, then this will not work. But like most things, you can always reach in and use Bash because it's been available for decades now, so you're good to go. But the most textbook use case here is, you know, let's say that you wanted to create a couple of different files in a deeply nested directory. Now, in this case, it's only in the temp directory, but you can imagine being, I don't know, five directories deep there, manually typing out that directory name multiple times just to create three different files. It's kind of annoying here. So this is where Brace expansion comes into play. It's not limited to the touch command, but uh, we can actually see that it will work with other commands as well. For example, here's the stat command to verify that we actually did just create three different files in that temp directory, A, B, and C, which we can see here. We can also remove those files if we want to. Uh, we can just do RM and then we can do the same thing that we saw before and it's all going to work. Now, there is a common theme here. Basically, if a command supports passing in multiple arguments, just like touch, stat, and RM do, as well as many other Unix commands, then things are going to work here because, you know, we totally could have did this, right? Like touch A, uh, temp B, like this. I'll just do A and B for now. You know, this works exactly the same here because touch actually uh, allows you to pass in multiple paths there. At least, I don't know if that's a hard rule when using uh, Brace expansion, but I have noticed if the command supports multiple arguments like this, then it will work using uh, Brace expansion. Now, uh, that's basically one reasonable use case, right? Like wanting to just create multiple files uh, in a directory here. But uh, let's rewind that a little bit and just like see how this works. And I find using echo is pretty nice because you can just see exactly uh, what's happening here without needing to create files on disk. And of course, you know, it's not limited to creating files where, you know, only commands that modify files. We'll actually see how to use it with curl a little bit later in this video here. But uh, we can see here that we run echo with brace expansion AB. You know, we can put in a C there as well. Uh, we can actually even use ranges too, which we're going to see in a bit here too. Like for example, like, whoa, you can even do it on a range of characters. But uh, yeah, you can see exactly how it works here. This is basically like a hello world example. It's a little bit uh, lame, right? Because you technically could have done AB like there to get very similar out output what we saw before. But yeah, this is Brace expansion in how it works. Now, there are other, other like more advanced use cases of this one. Like for example, here's a command I just uh, popped in. You know, I had that copy to my clipboard because I just didn't want to type it all out on video here. But uh, you can see you're using nested braces here, right? This is the same exact Brace expansion that we saw before, uh, like my file dash one, my file dash two, my file dash three, but let's say for the second one, you actually want to have little variants where you put like an A and B there, or, you know, whatever, you know, you can put in literally anything. It doesn't need to be like A or B or anything like that. And you can see the output there. You know, we just appended that to there. Uh, so that's kind of useful. Uh, but, you know, earlier we also talked a little bit about ranges. And by the way, when I say uh, pretty useful, I don't know, technically I have not ever done this ever, I don't think maybe I don't want to commit to saying never, but it's not something I commonly use, but I just wanted to see like, hey, did nest, uh, nested brace expansion work? And sure it does. Yep, cool. So let's go over uh, ranges a little bit because they're a little bit interesting too. So you can do echo 1.5 there, and that is going to give us a range from one to five. It could be basically anything that you want, zero based up to, I don't know, 20 or something like that. You know, th there's no limit there within reason. Uh, you can also deal with negative numbers. So if you wanted to have a range from, let's say, I don't know, negative five to five, you can see that's going up there from negatives. Uh, you can also go in reverse too. For example, if you want to go from 10 down to five, let's say, then you can see that it's going to count down from the one that you start with. And as I saw before, it also supports using characters. So you can do A to Z to print the alphabet there. If you want that to be uh, capitalized, you can do that as well. You can also do this in reverse too. So if you want to do, you know, uh, Z to A, something like that, then we can see uh, well, that's kind of interesting. You know, I'm kind of just freeforming this video here. Didn't anticipate that to happen. Um, cool. So <laughs> I'm going to go lowercase for now. But yeah, let, let us know in the comments below if you know exactly why that happens. Now, I can take some educated guesses there, but uh, I will not spoil it. And let's see. Okay. So we saw a couple of different basic ranges there. You can actually do some other kind of interesting range-like things too as well. For example, you know, we've got this one to three over here. Uh, if we put two adjacent brace expansions next to each other, you can get a combination of those. So for example here, you know, we want to do one to three with A, B, so we can see, you know, A1, uh, or wow, one A, one B, 2A, 2B, you know, et cetera, et cetera. You know, these things don't need to be uh, the same. Well, in this case, you know, we have three things happening in the first one, two things happening in the second one. You know, th those don't need to line up. You know, we can have, you know, A to Z here and it's going to do it for all of them. I don't know. This is kind of an interesting one. I feel like this will have some interesting use cases that could be fun to experiment with. Although I do not really use this too much in practice. 
But I don't know, I maybe one takeaway of this video is that uh, just knowing that brace expansion exists could be really useful for the one or two times or a couple times that you need it, right? It's basically something uh, in your tool belt. Now, another uh, common use case potentially would be like, let's say that you wanna create a couple of different files here and you want them to be named uh, with a range. So you can do something like this where you just have, I don't know, like my file and then one through five. And if we do that, then we can see that we actually do have uh, multiple files. They're all right up, all ready to go, ready for us. So we can do something like an LS temp my file and star like that. And we can just see that, yep, all those files that got created there. I don't know if you needed to create like numeric files in like some order like that, that could be useful. Of course you can use characters too. It also does not need to be at the very end of the file here. You know, this range could be anywhere, right? You can put it in the middle, you can put it at the start. So let's just do at the start here just for fun. And then we can do my file there and then we can do uh, this way like this, my file, and then cool, there we go. So we have our numbers there. It also works with directories as well. So let's say that we wanted to make derp and we want to do a temp, uh, maybe want to make a, a nested demo here, like for example, and then we can do our range here to say like, you know what, I want to create three different directories inside the temp dem uh, inside the temp demo directory. And then, I don't know, like from negative five to one or something like that, we can do like my uh, other dir or something. And if we do that, then we have all sorts of interesting things happening. So let me go and do a tree on the demo directory here and we can see exactly what was output. So we can see here, you know, in that temp uh, demo directory, we did create three directories here with this range. And then we created, uh, well, seven weirdly named directories here, you know, starting from uh, negatives going to one here, but it did do technically what we told it to do. This could be kind of useful if you're just setting up some, I don't know, uh, directory structure skeleton for some project or something and new things numbered, like, I don't know, some type of table of contents or something like that could be useful to do for sure. Now let's go over uh, how this may apply to other things as well. So in last week's video, we went over using how to recursively print the file contents of something and we landed on using file globbing. So check this out. I am gonna go to, where am I gonna go? I am gonna go to uh, just an example project that we can screw around with here. Uh, I'll leave a link to this one. This is an open source Dockerized Flask example app here up on GitHub. And let's just say that uh, we want to not just recursively print all of the files in this entire directory or one specific file. You know, let's say that we want to recursively print types of files, like for example, I don't know, all the Python files and all the markdown files, or maybe only very specific Python files. And you know, that other video from uh, last week, whatever, I'll drop a card up, that goes into more details there. Uh, but yeah, let's, let's just say, let's just say that we want to do a printing out of, I don't know, just a couple of different Python files. So we can do this and then we can say, there's our glopping there, you know, recursively go through all the directories. What do we wanna do? Well, I wanna get, let's say, I don't know, the init files and also the view files. And these are both Python files. You know, I could have put a .py after each one of these individually, but you know, I can also just put it there at the end and now we're only gonna return these files here. So what happened here? Oh, um, yeah, okay. So I need to do negative n plus one. I, I, my God, can I type? There we go, nice. So uh, we can see here that it is uh, printing out all of the init files. In this case, in this project, I do have init files there, but they're all empty, there's nothing there. However, I do have a couple of different views.py file and they are all there. So this is just one nice way to combine globbing with using brace expansion as well. Uh, we're not limited to just doing it like this. For example, you know, if you wanted to see all of the markdown files as well as all of the Python files, we can do something like this, where we say, you know, dot, and then we can say markdown, and then we can say Python files like this. Uh, I think I actually probably want to do that in re... No, this is good. I was going to say I was going to do it in reverse because uh, the markdown is very long. What happened here? Oh, yeah, duh. Yeah, no, I don't want to do that. What do I want to do? I want to do... Well, I was going to say like this totally would work uh, like this. So this is going to get literally all the Python files and then all the markdown files. Yeah, I guess we can roll with that for the video. It's not important. I was going to say like maybe specific file instead of like just... Uh, all the markdown files, like, you know, maybe you want to get something like just the readme file and then all the Python files, like that would totally work. Or, you know, maybe you just want to get all the init files just so it's easier to read so we don't need to scroll as much here. Uh, this would work. And then we can see that, you know, there's the readme file. It's very long, lots of content to go through. And then we have all the Python files there. So yeah, we have uh, quite a few things at our disposal here if we just wanted to do something like that. Now let's, uh, move this over to start using curl. And by the way, this is also kind of interesting, sort of kind of didn't know this until recently. So did you know that if you curl 
you know, like this, you can get the example of, you know, whatever page that you wanted to curl, but you can actually curl multiple pages uh, in a row. Like you can just pop in different arguments here, you know, just like the touch command, you can put in two different file names. Well, curl supports putting in two different URLs. So maybe I'll do different URLs so it makes a little bit more sense here. But we can see here that, uh, yeah, there's our example domain here. Uh, and there is the Google request over here as well. But uh, yeah, it actually did make two HTTP requests in succession. So combining with that knowledge, you know, let's say, I don't know, you wanted to curl WTTR, like just to get the weather. Uh, you can do brace expansion now to, I don't know, you want to get the weather in Sacra, can I spell this? Sacramento, yeah, there we go. And then, I don't know, Albany, I guess is the capital of New York. So if you wanted to get the weather in two different areas of the US, basically on opposite sides of the US, we can see that we have the weather for Sacramento here, California, and then you have also Albany, New York. So kind of neat, I don't know, could be useful. Uh, I've actually also done videos in the past about this one site called uh, HTTP status. So for example, if we curl uh, HTTP status, and then you do something like a 200, this will respond back exactly what the status code is for the status code that you put in. So if you put in a 200, you'll get an okay. If you put in a 500, you get an internal server. You know, the video that I've done in the past goes into more details. But again, we can start using Brace expansion here to kind of do interesting things. Like if you just wanted to see what it's like to get different status codes uh, that are specific types of errors, like, you know, these uh, 500 ones are pretty common. You know, you have internal server error, not implemented, bad gateway, service unavailable. You know, for example, if you're in maintenance mode or something and then gateway timeout. So I don't know, kind of neat. Might want to use that for something. Uh, but yeah, this is basically how you can use Brace expansion to solve some pretty interesting problems, I suppose. And uh, that's going to do it for this one. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. Also, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and let us know like what type of things are you going to be using Brace expansion for? With that said, thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next video.